Hello and welcome to TV30, a production of the National Television Network and the Government Information Service. I am your host, Kendall Eugene, and today with me is uh, Tourism Officer Samantha Charles uh, from the Ministry of Tourism, Investment, Creative Industries, Culture and Information. Samantha, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Kendall. Thank you for being here. We have a lot to talk about. Yes, we do. Especially with regards to the nation's young people. Yes. Yes, when I saw what came through my email, I was most pleased, and then I realized, wait, the age limit has long eclipsed me. I cannot even participate. <laughs> so the Ministry of Tourism is uh, currently preparing to host the 2023 mm -hmm. National Tourism Public Speaking Competition. That's right. And you also have a selection for the Junior Tourism, the Junior Minister of Tourism. That is right. Okay, so we have two big things to talk about. Yes, it's um, kind of bundled up in one, but we have it in phases. Okay, phases. All right, let, yes. let's chat about that now. Uh, phase one. What's phase one all about? Okay, so good, good day, everyone. Mm -hmm. um, so phase one of the competition is um, what we call a pre-selection. So the, as a, to give some background, mm -hmm. the National Tourism Public Speaking Competition is an education initiative that the ministry has hosted um, for a, f a couple years now, mm -hmm. so way before I joined the ministry. So it's actually a staple on our calendar of events. Okay. So um, what we sought to do was to sort of diversify it a bit, make it a little more interesting to generate more interest from our student population, primarily our secondary school mm -hmm. um, students. So as a pre precursor or pre-selection phase towards the actual national tourism public speaking competition, the ministry is once again opening out or sending out a call right. to students ages 14 to 17 to submit a TikTok video. We did so last year mm -hmm. and we're doing it again this year but under um, two different themes or headings. So the, the intention of the TikTok video is to really tap into the creativity of our students and to a certain extent to test their knowledge about the tourism product. Okay. So there are two areas whereby students can um, choose to submit that TikTok video. One, they can choose to design a top package for a celebrity of their choice, mm -hmm. incorporating as many of our tourism um, product offerings as possible or they may opt for the second option, which is to prepare a TikTok video identifying um, must-dos in St. Lucia. So things you wow. really need to do when you come to, you know, 758. So the, um, I'm most interested in the tour package for a celebrity. Right. Because um, if I were to do one, I would um, possibly select a um, basketball player from the San yes. Antonio Spurs, mm -hmm. who is a Caribbean man, mm -hmm. former basketball player, Tim Duncan, and of course, <coughs> designed that package highlighting yes. the beautiful sports in St. Lucia. Um, how long must the video be if I were to do one? Okay, so the, the video must be 90 seconds okay. long. So we, um, we expect that within that time frame, the student has sufficient um, space to incorporate as much as possible mm -hmm. in terms of our product. Um, I mean, you know, we are the best Caribbean Indeed. island. You know, that is a given. And there's lots to explore, lots to experience, lots to love, and many reasons for you to come back. So we expect that our um, culinary elements will be incorporated in that video, our sites and attractions, mm -hmm. um, accommodation, we have um, soft adventure, recreation, et, et cetera. So like I said earlier, it would really give us an idea as to the students' knowledge of our core tourism products and services and how they could utilize that in um, marketing St. Lucia from a youth perspective. And yes, they can opt to choose any celebrity of their choice. Does it have to be an international celebrity, a local celebrity? Uh, not local, of course it can be local, because mm. they would know our sports. Regional, but, uh, regional international, or international. Yes, it's all left to the student, yeah. In doing the TikTok videos, we see that a lot of the um, creativity really comes out with how they produce the video. Mm. Um, you can see the transitions and everything. What are you guys looking for in that? Are you looking for the best <coughs> producer or just the video that highlights the issue? We're yes. looking for the video that highlights the core elements of our product, but as well we're looking at, um, in judging the video, uh, once we've gotten all the selections in, we're looking at execution, we're looking at um, um, creativity in terms of um, using sound, mm -hmm. etc. Yeah. So um, 
like we said before the interview started, mm -hmm. the young persons are way more creative than you and they I. Are. So there are apps are. that can be used. They, they you know, they, they are resource persons they can utilize mm -hmm. to produce their videos. So when we, when we do get to judging, and we will have a complement of um, creatives in addition to other resource persons in the industry to judge, mm -hmm. um, the you know, we will um, judge those videos against a creative benchmark and to see who has the best and who um, moves forward to the next step of the competition. So um, the students who are interested in submitting their 90 second TikTok video, um, where can they head on to on the social media platforms to get more information? And okay. when does it really roll out? Okay, so we do have an official um, launch coming up, but this interview is sort of like a precursor. Mm -hmm. And um, the students can feel free to contact the Ministry of Tourism, 468 4629 or 468 5395, excuse me, mm -hmm. to get more information. Um, in setting the plan together, we did engage the Ministry of Education. So the competition has gotten endorsement from education. Um, we have sent out correspondence to the district offices and the respective secondary schools, mm -hmm. many of which have gotten um, acknowledgement of receipt to date. So that um, the awareness has already started filtering down to the school. So the, the, <coughs> the students would have eventually, if not now, they will eventually get wind of the competition via their schools. Right. And in addition to the correspondence, we have attached the the official flyer for the TikTok competition. We did um, put together a very creative and um, informative flyer. So each secondary school would have gotten the flyer so that the students can see I'm what's very up. impressed with um, <coughs> the, the idea with the TikTok video, especially being able to design a tour package for yes. my favorite celebrity and putting in the must do's in St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. Can we integrate both of them, or it has to be either one Separate. or the other? Um, it's just to give them an option. Okay. So um, it depends on the student's um, preference. You could, if you have a favorite celebrity, you mm -hmm. offer number one. If you don't, um, so it's it's basically up to the students. But you cannot merge the two. So we how want to many, see how, how many times can I enter the competition? Once you can only submit one TikTok video, and like I said, the videos will be judged based on a, a criteria, mm -hmm. and then the the top 10 students move on to the National Tourism Public Speaking Competition, which is set, scheduled for June 2023. All right. Now, we will be chatting more about the, um, the Tourism Public Speaking Competition in a little bit because, I'm again, I realize that I have long eclipsed the um, age to enter, but yes. there is something that is very, very, very exciting about the Tourism Public Speaking Competition that we have to highlight. And it has to do with a location. And I'm okay. reading that and I'm seeing that these individuals have been traveling very far. Yes, they are. In public speaking. Yes, so the, um, the location mm -hmm. is actually for the, the third leg of the entire um, education, education right. initiative. We'll come to that right. in a little while. We need to take a break right now, ladies and gentlemen. This is uh, TV30. I am your host, Kendall Eugene. Today we have with us Samantha Charles. We just spoke about our TikTok competition. We'll come back and chat about public speaking in just a bit. Stay with us. Oi, you realize you step on my toe? Well, do something about it. Gasai, busting that money. Hold on. If somebody tried to cross you, and the matting start to take you, no need for war or violence, cause the police there to help you. If a trouble starts in this session, alright, no need for aggression. We don't want no violence in the place. Control your temper, respect each other. Don't let no trouble escalate, cause you know better. Control your temper, respect each other. Don't let no trouble escalate, cause you know better. Control your temper. A message from Mission Boy Studio 758 Acid Creations and the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. Welcome back to TV30. Of course, we have with us here, with, with us this uh, afternoon, is uh, Samantha Charles. Samantha, again, thank you so much for joining us. And um, just before we got back from our break, we were discussing um, public speaking and how far it has taken so many of our young people. And that's part two of what um, we're going to be right. chatting about today. 
Before we get into the location that I am so excited to tell you guys about, let's talk about the um, National Tourism Public Speaking Competition that is set for June this June, year? Yes. Okay. June 15. Okay, so the public speaking competition is the next phase of the entire education initiative. Okay. So following from the TikTok competition, mm -hmm. the videos will be judged and the top 10, the students in the top 10 videos, they move on to the next round of competition, which is the National Tourism Public Speaking Competition, which is what we've had every year for many years. But COVID, mm -hmm. when COVID came about, we had to put on a back burner. So that competition will again um, um, judge the student's ability to um, research on um, relevant tourism related topics mm -hmm. and present those topics, present um, recommendations for strengthening the industry, etc. So we would be given um, a total of five topics based on relevant tourism themes or you know, um, what is currently trending in tourism. And each of those 10 finalists will then choose a topic of their choice to present at the competition on June 15th. Okay. So they would have sufficient time to research and um, the students also get a lot of assistance from their teachers in preparing their presentation for the public speaking competition. Um, they are judged by industry professionals and persons in the tourism industry. Mm -hmm. So it's a little more rigorous than the TikTok competition, but it then prepares them for the next phase, which is actually the CTO Youth Congress later on in the year. Okay, so I read that they're supposed to submit videos for the uh, public speaking competition. Is that still something that is going to happen this um, time around? We've not actually um, looked at it from that angle, okay. but for now we just have the... Um, the, the questions that they will be. Um, it could be any, um, any mixture of questions. Right. We're not fine-tuned it yet, but we're working on um, the proper execution of that particular component of the industry. Um, you're targeting... <coughs> of the competition, the competition. excuse me. Yeah, you're targeting various um, age groups for that competition yes. as well. What age groups are we looking at? 14 to 17. And from inception, we need to stick with that age group because that is the age group that CTO... Um, stipulates mm -hmm. for the Youth Congress. Um, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we cannot deviate from that because we need to ensure that our representative falls within that age group. So it's 14 to 17 year olds. Will any form of training be given to um, these young speakers after they have gone through the process of selection? So yes. Okay. So we, we intend to have some training for the finalists prior to the public speaking competition mm -hmm. in, um, you know, strengthening their skills, um, you know, diction, deportment, mm -hmm. eye contact, all of those areas that are critical to proper public speaking. And as well, we intend to have a, a session or two for the winner of the public speaking competition, which will be our junior minister of tourism. So prior to representing St. Lucia at the Youth Congress later on in the year, mm -hmm. we will have about two sessions for that individual to ensure that we send off the uh, best that we have to represent us regionally mm -hmm. later in the year. Now, we have had a uh, few representatives. Oh, yes. We have had a number. Um, we've, we had um, our current junior minister of tourism, JC Thomas, mm -hmm. represented us in the Cayman Islands last year. Um, we've had still a representation from all our prior junior ministers. Mm -hmm. We've had representation from um, Francis Alexander, who actually won in Grenada in 2017. Mm -hmm. So he emerged victorious among 13 other junior ministers and commissioners of tourism. So some, some Caribbean countries, they have commissioners of tourism. So you know there's sort of a difference mm -hmm. in nomenclature, right? right. Um, we've had Rowan, um, Alfred, Blossom, mm -hmm. Frages, Ian Vestiza, mm -hmm. who I think a lot of persons oh, know we like when, it. yes, uh, before I came to the ministry, mm -hmm. he was one of the, um, junior ministers at the time. So we've had very, very good representation from our junior ministers. And there's no doubt that whoever emerges victorious this year mm -hmm. will um, represent us in similar fashion. How important is it um, to the ministry 
to ensure that not only do we get the best representation, but the young people are given the opportunity to represent the island mm -hmm. on a major stage, such as um, the, right. uh, the CTO. I think it's critical. Um, a lot of the times you, you see um, the stakeholder representatives, the ministers, um, other persons in the industry speaking about um, our tourism sector, speaking on behalf of the, in, of, of the sector, speaking on behalf of the people, articulating um, the policies and articulating the, the best way forward for the growth of our, of our industry. Mm -hmm. So it's always refreshing to have the viewpoint of our, our younger persons to, you know, to, to see how best they understand the industry from their perspective, mm -hmm. especially you have a lot of young persons who with family members, parents, aunts, uncles, whose livelihood depends on tourism. So it's always as nice to um, hear their thoughts on tourism and to have a voice from the youth perspective on matters that pertain to um, the tourism industry. The youth perspective is something that is so important. E in extremely. Every so now we're going to chat about the um, Caribbean Tourism Organization Youth, youth Congress. Congress right. And that, that yeah. was the one that really had me um, blushing a little bit. <laughs> you, uh, you want to go represent us? I wouldn't mind. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't mind. Uh, after you all hear where individuals <coughs> have been and um, yes. been representing the island on such stages, grand stages like that one. The 2023 um, CTO Youth Congress is um, one that we are looking forward to, mm -hmm. getting our representatives up there and representing us very, very well. Tell us about the um, CTO Youth Congress. Youth Congress. Okay, so as I articulated, that is <coughs> sort of the, the climax, the mm -hmm. culminating factor. After you've done the TikTok, the public speaking, this is the, the first official um, duty of our Junior Minister of Tourism. Okay. So the Youth Congress is an initiative of the CTO, Caribbean Tourism Organization, and it, it takes place every year in a different Caribbean island and it brings together junior ministers, commissioners of tourism to um, deliberate on tourism related topics that affect not just individual countries but the region. Yeah. And it is actually part of the wider state of the industry conference um, where you have um, um, tourism stakeholders on, on a different platform discuss major tourism issues such as airlift, et cetera, mm -hmm. um, um, product development. So the Youth Congress is a component of that. Okay. And um, we've had representation, I mentioned a few names, yeah. but in terms of the islands, we've had representation in Martinique, Curacao, St. Thomas, um, Grenada, Cayman last year, Bahamas, etc. But this year, mm -hmm. the Youth Congress is going to be held in the Turks and Caicos. So um, our young persons out there, if you know nothing else captures your interest, see why that I was blushing. <laughs> see why I was yes, blushing? the the fact that we going to the youth congress is going to be held in um, Turks and Caicos that should, if nothing else, ring mm -hmm. a bell or you know jog you to take part in the competition. And um, there are different topics mm -hmm. that the participants should prepare on for this year. One of the topics is, is wellness tourism. Um, there's accessibility tourism and building a resilient and sustainable tourism workforce. So um, we actually try to mirror the, the, um, the thematic areas of the Youth Congress. So mm -hmm. again, looking at relevant themes and um, trending topics in tourism, things that pertain to the now, right. and then, you know, questions uh, formulated around those themes. For we'll talk about the topics in right. just a little while. I want to know more <coughs> about that. I told you I was blushing for a reason. Turks and Caicos <laughs> is the venue. That is where the youth um, tourism members will be heading. But we'll chat about that in a little bit. We'll take a break. Be right back with more TV Booty. The world's climate is changing, and that affects all of us. Storms are becoming increasingly 
intense. Periods of intense drought and heavy rain stress farm animals and destroy our crops. Higher average ocean temperatures kill our coral reefs and change the migratory patterns of fish. St. Lucia contributes only 0.0015% of global greenhouse gas emissions, but is doing its part, along with countries around the world, to reduce the emissions that are warming our world and changing our climate. These efforts are called mitigation. But decades of emissions have already changed the climate, and the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere today will increase average global temperatures even more. We need to adapt, that is, do everything we can to prepare for and respond to the actual and expected negative effects of climate change and everyone has a role to play. We need to protect our crops, build homes that withstand storms and keep our drains and waterways free of garbage to help us recover or bounce back from climatic events. Learn more about the Government of St. Lucia's National Adaptation Plan and the steps you can take to protect yourself and your fellow St. Lucians. Welcome back to TV30, a production of the uh, NTN and the GIF. I am here with uh, Samantha Charles from the Ministry of Tourism, and we're chatting today about CTO. We're also chatting about Youth Congress. We've brought it to your attention that there is a massive TikTok video competition going on that you need to be a part of. Why? Because some lucky person is going to be representing our beautiful island in the Turks and Caicos. Right. If nothing tickles your memory on how to get this video done, that should. That should. So we were chatting about the topics <coughs> on um, right. various uh, topics that would be um, put forward to our, our representatives. Um, run, run us um, through them one more time. Correct. Okay. So um, as I was saying, the CTU has um, put forward three questions mm -hmm. for students to um, choose wellness tourism, accessibility tourism, or building a resilient and sustainable tourism workforce. And again, looking at um, themes that are relevant to tourism within this, this um, era, mm -hmm. and to see how best the students can um, put information together and <coughs> present on it. But in addition to the prepared question, there's what you call the mystery round, okay. where um, students are tested on how fast they could think on their feet. So the mystery round question is a one minute, a one minute response on a topic neither student would have had knowledge about, and then they judge it on that as well. So that, in addition to the questions, combined, um, you know, this, the winner is chosen from chosen those from two. That. Now, are these topics, um, of course, they are given <coughs> well in advance. So the, uh, oh yeah, these topics were submitted um, to the end of January from CTO. Okay. So the students have the opportunity to um, do research on it. Yes. You mentioned that um, they could get the help from their teachers, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. I remember when I did public speaking while I was at secondary school, our teachers did assist us, but they ensured that they did not do the work for us. Mm -hmm. Would you recommend the same happen this oh, time Definitely, around? definitely. Um, we, we would like the students to take charge of their um, their submission, mm -hmm. their preparation for the public speaking. But as if anything else, um, especially given the topics, the students may not be too awkward with that particular subject area and they need assistance. Mm -hmm. But apart from the school helping, the Ministry of Tourism, the technical officer of the Ministry of Tourism, we also provide assistance in preparing the, the um, presentation last year. I need to acknowledge the team from the Community Tourism Agency, CTA. Mm -hmm. They um, did a wonderful job in assisting with the preparation of our current junior minister for the Youth Congress. So we do provide the support, but at the end of the day, it really is the student's um, final product mm -hmm. to present um, uh, um, as they see fit. With all of um, what's happening around the world, uh, we've seen that tourism, is, and I mean, um, as a result of the pandemic, we see mm -hmm. tourism now coming back and coming back in full, <coughs> full, full stream. Uh, junior tourism um, minister for us now, going out to represent St. Lucia, what would you like to see from that individual? Okay, <coughs> well, from the, I could say from the ministry standpoint, yes. what we would like to see is a young man or woman who is able to present a very powerful and riveting um, 
or make a very powerful and riveting presentation on any of the three topics given. Uh, a young person who has done the work, done the necessary research, and is able to um, convincingly, convincingly speak on the topic of choice, mm -hmm. if there are recommendations to be made. And I think for each of the questions, um, there are recommendations asked for each of these areas. Convince the judges, convince the audience, convince CTO that these recommendations are feasible, mm -hmm. they are practical, and these are things that um, countries can look to adopting or implementing to strengthen in their individual tourism products. Okay. Um, we're looking at secondary school students, correct? Yes. Uh, what age the exemption of fifth form, okay. reason being they them. have the CSEC and um, we do not want to interfere that. So, sorry, but we're looking at targeting forms threes and fours only. Okay. Um, a fifth form student <coughs> would feel much aggrieved. <laughs> you have already apologized for them not being a part yeah. of it. Uh, but um, how can a fifth form student participate, though, even though they will not be a part of the competition? But would you recommend that they a fifth or fourth? Yes, fourth? yes. If you, if you can rely on your peers in mm -hmm. the higher forms for proper support, mm -hmm. then by all means, go ahead. I mean, it, even if you can't participate and you, you have the, um, the knowledge or you have the creative skills mm -hmm. to say, hey, let me help you with your video, I could help you to this or that, then by all means, feel free. So all is not lost no. if you're in Form 5. You can still assist. And uh, like we mentioned earlier, the competition is in a two-faced format. Yes. Okay. And one I am sure that would be right up the uh, alley of our young people, that TikTok, TikTok video. Um, looking forward to seeing the video. Yes, we are looking forward to seeing as many submissions as, pos as possible. Mm -hmm. So students, um, get your thinking cap on and start thinking of what we have to offer, our products, our services, what makes us unique, why we've gotten world's best honeymoon destination, why we've for the first time gotten the accolade of world's best adventure, adventure destination. destination. Start making your notes and start putting those videos together. All right, and uh, any final words from you? Um, just to say that, um, just to encourage the, the secondary schools um, and look forward to receiving the Ministry of Tourism from March 21st to April 4th, where the technical team will be visiting schools, making presentations, and really engaging students on the, not just the public speaking, but tourism in general. Mm -hmm. So good luck to all of you who are interested, and we look forward to receiving your submissions. Well, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it, and look out for them coming to your school. I will be coming as well, because I have plans on um, joining that team. Welcome, to we Kato. appreciate it. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. This has been TV30, <coughs> the production of the uh, NTN and the GIF. I am Kendall Eugene. Thank you for joining.